Right now, we're excavating the floor of what is known to be a wigwam. Behind me, you can see folks lined up to get into President Bush's lecture, which is set to have begun just a minute ago. And over here to my left, folks are gathered in protest, including the helmet, jacket, boots and air pack. Fire gear altogether weighs about 55 pounds. I actually just received word from our producer Alexis back in the studio that Tippecanoe County, where I'm standing right now, is under a travel advisory watch. Here in Carroll County, the public doesn't have any more information about the Delphi double homicide investigation than they did before the start of today's hearing. This is a pulse oximeter, a device that makes it easy to see your blood oxygen level. To use it, just clip it onto your index finger with your nail facing up and hold your hand below your heart. Here I am live now in the Tippecanoe County Office building. There are constituents and candidates alike here. The vibe is very excited. A lot of chatter going on right now. And I am actually here with Wabash Township trustee candidate Angel Valentin. I am here on Columbia Street in Lafayette right now driving to show you what road conditions are looking like. So let's take a look out the front of the vehicle. As you can see, we are not back to asphalt just yet. I'm just going to step aside here for one moment to show you the scene that's going on on McCarty Lane right across the street from IU Health Arnett. Multiple cars have honked in support of these women. Four candles, four crosses. A tribute to the four young girls who died here six years ago from a community that hasn't seen any answers. Neither one of them were asleep, and I believe this was unprovoked and senseless. 20-year-old Varun Manish Cheda of Indianapolis has been identified as the victim in this morning's deadly stabbing at Purdue University's McCutcheon Hall. The suspect is in custody now and has been charged with murder. His name is Ji Min Shah. He is a 22-year-old international student from South Korea. The suspect, who is the victim's roommate, actually made the call to Purdue police at 12.44 a.m. on Wednesday. Both the suspect and victim were awake in the room at the time of the stabbing. Purdue University Police Chief Leslie Weedy calls this murder unprovoked and senseless. This is the first homicide on campus since 2014. One McCutcheon Hall resident says these events don't sit right with him. Back home where I'm from, we used to leave our doors open all the time and we would be in our friends' houses, especially in my, in my area of residence. I would be going to my friends' houses overnight and we wouldn't be thinking twice because the place that I'm from, we're kind of used to it mostly because it's a rather safe area, which Purdue also is pretty safe, but it really surprised me. That's why it doesn't really sit right with me about how something like this could happen so easily. Purdue University police say a notice was not sent out to students at the time of the incident because officers arrived on the scene within minutes and had the suspect in custody. The university says it has clinicians available for walk-in appointments and will provide crisis counseling services to those who need it. Reporting in West Lafayette, Indiana, I'm Perry Apostolakos. That former midwife actually handed in her resignation letter here at IU Health Arnett Hospital last week after receiving just 24 hours notice of the termination of her practice. And in response, multiple people have come out in support of her and all the midwives who work at IU Health Arnett, and they are standing here today in protest. The protest has been going on since about 1 p.m. I'm going to step aside so that you can take a look at all the people who are here right now. At last count, we had about 50 participants here. There have been about two dozen or so more coming and going throughout the day, the five hours that this protest has been going on. It is winding down right now, but they are still here to have their voices heard. And that one midwife says that she can no longer do what she loves to support her six-month-old son. Take a look. It's always been more than a job for me. It's been my greatest joy in my life to care for women. And that's been ripped away from me with no notice. For over seven years, Shara Albright was a midwife at IU Health Arnett Hospital. She says she has delivered about 500 babies. Last week, she was told the midwife practice at the hospital was being paused indefinitely. The hospital released a statement Tuesday saying midwives will no longer be able to perform deliveries, but they could give care on an outpatient basis. I did not go to school for a thousand plus hours of training and I have not been working my 
heart out for this organization for seven years to be working in an office. I became a midwife so I could help women give birth to their babies. I didn't become a midwife to be sitting in an office. She calls the communication from IU Health Arnett abysmal, claiming her patients were lied to about why she wasn't there to treat them. And patients were being told that I had a family emergency, so I had people contacting me. And I had to explain to them that the family emergency was not caused by anything like that. It was from IU Health. When it comes to why this is happening now, hospital spokespeople have declined to explain. But Albright says money and lack of respect for midwifery from obstetricians and gynecologists could be factors. We had two very supportive obstetricians that were supportive of the midwife program that were making sure that we were able to practice the way we wanted to. And then when they retired, several of the OBGYNs that are currently practicing decided they did not want to work with us anymore. They have doctors who are able to perform surgeries, who can bring in revenue for the organization. And we have been told many times that we aren't revenue generators for the organization. Albright says she has kept statistics for the practice since 2016. She says the midwives have low cesarean section rates, low rates of babies admitted to the NICU, preterm birth, third and fourth degree lacerations, and postpartum hemorrhage. In a word, Albright feels betrayed. And these doctors are colleagues that I've worked with for seven years. I've worked alongside them. I've taken care of their patients for them when they weren't able to. And they left me without a job. Purposely. You done. Baby boy. The doctor that delivered my son when I had to transfer to the hospital because he wasn't able to be born vaginally, she was leading the charge against me losing my job after I trusted her with my life and my son's life. I'm just heartbroken. Kristen Norman says Albright is one of her favorite midwives she worked with in her past two births. I just, I, they were great. They cared for me well. They <clears throat> listened to my concerns. They, I don't know, I just, I felt like they really took the time to get to know me and understand my needs. Expecting her third child in July, Norman panicked when she heard the midwife practice was being dissolved indefinitely. The closest similar practice, where midwives can deliver babies in a hospital, is located about an hour away in Indianapolis. I just, I feel like I don't know what to do. I, I feel really helpless right now. Women deserve options. Women deserve to have the care that they want and that honors their, their values for birth. News 18 has repeatedly reached out to IU Health Arnett Hospital for comment on the reasons behind this decision and for a response to Albright's claims. They have declined every time. A family is now torn apart by a war happening an ocean away. We once again meet with the Ukrainian family who found safe haven from the Russian attacks in West Lafayette. The death of a son, husband and father has now rocked their world. Why, days later, he still has not been laid to rest. This is the last video Olesia Vasilenko has of her husband, Konstantin Semchinsky, who was killed earlier this month while fighting for the Ukrainian army in Russia's war on its neighbor. You know, I'm feeling now like my children lost their childhood. Emotions run high in the home where she and her two children now live with her mother-in-law, Natalia Semchinska Ul in West Lafayette. We first met the family just over a year ago when Alessia brought the children, 13 year old son Glebe, and eight year old daughter Solo, to the United States to attend school in a safe environment. Konstantin stayed behind to fight for their homeland. My son technically wasn't an army man, he was a professor at uh, the university. But when the war started, and I wanted him to be safe and come here maybe. And he said something like that, that just imagine if everybody would leave, who would be uh, fighting for our country. And he made the ultimate sacrifice. He was killed Sunday, March 19th. And to make an already terrible time even harder, Olesya's immigration status now prevents her from returning home to Ukraine to bury her husband. A journey that wouldn't be an easy one, even if it was allowed. Nothing is flying right now to Ukraine. It's not like we buy a ticket and she goes directly 
to Kiev or something. All of my family and friends, they're waiting for me and they should save the body of my husband all of these days or weeks or months. It sounds like not only do you carry your own grief of sure. losing your husband, but you shoulder the grief of an sure. entire nation. Sure. Your, his decision was uh, to go to protect, but not just our life and our country, but we should protect, you know, the order of our uh, world. world. As News 18 has previously reported, a GoFundMe page has been created to support the family. In just three days, it has surpassed its fundraising goal of $30,000 by over 2,000 and counting. We start tonight off with breaking news out of Lafayette. Lafayette police have confirmed one female is dead in a shooting at the Walmart parking lot on Commerce Drive earlier this evening. A Lafayette police investigation is underway after a body was found at the Speedway gas station on South Street near the I-65 exit this evening. And a father and son were arrested early this morning after a fight in downtown Lafayette. Well, folks, this morning was an interesting one for me, to say the least. At 8 a.m., the West Lafayette Fire Department Citizens Academy began. I was one of six everyday people who got to try their hand at being a firefighter. One Delphi woman is making a difference, one crocheted beanie at a time. She shared with me why she started this passion project for cancer patients. Take a look. 